Hi and welcome to my channel with our first creepy kitty doll repaint creation for Mermaid. So since it's for Mermaid I picked a Laguna that had really bad legs. Um, they just don't hold position at all. So we're not just wasting a perfectly good doll. So first we'll start off with cutting her hair. Once that's all nice and short, just get that as short as we possibly can. I'm going to dip her in some boiling water and rip her head off brutal. Um, being really careful not to break the neck peg and we're just gonna dunk her in the water again and soften up the glue from the inside so we can rip her hair out. Ew, yuck! Right so now her head's nice and clean. So then we're going to take her hair off, uh, her face off with the acetone. 100% acetone. <laughs> nice and it all comes off nicely like that. Um, and we're just going to wipe all of that off and get right in there with a Q-tip. Now what I just found 100% acetone works better for me than nail polish remover. Um, then I just wash her face in warm soapy water and get all of that acetone off and just leave her to dry overnight. Now we're going to have to take her legs off since this is a mermaid. So thankfully this one has some elastic in the hip joint so that was just easy to cut off and I'll save her legs for modeling and making shoes I think in the future. Right so now we need some decent thickish wire that's nice and bendable. Um, measure how long that's going to be for the tail and just cut that off and thread it through the hip joint. I'm just going to twist that around to get a skeleton structure as we can so it doesn't unravel. Twist that way back up so that we don't have a sharp point at the end that can um, poke through the body. Since we'll be making that out of fabric and just going to twist that as tight as we can until the tail can support the body. I first tried that and she was just flip flopping all over the place. So it's nice and tight now. And so I'll use some yarn that I used for her hair. Um, did that earlier off camera, but we'll look at that later. I'm just going to use that to bulk up her body and make the base of the tail. Um, I actually watched, um, it's five years old, but Hextian's video was amazing for um, learning how to make a really nice, poseable mermaid tail. So thanks, Hextian. We'll just keep bulking that up until it gets the shape that we want. Um, don't know about you, but I think mermaids look more realistic with a bit of a bigger booty. to do what Hextian did in his videos by gluing it and twisting it around the tail. I don't know if I used the wrong glue but this just really didn't work for me. Um, so I ended up just twisting it and then holding it in place with some elastic bands before going over with the final lot of the fabric. So I tried to make a nice transition here by using glue and like trying to push the fabric into her body. Um, spoiler alert, this really doesn't work. Um, so I end up just wiping it off and I'll try Millie Putt a wee bit later, but um, yeah, that really didn't work. Again, not sure if it's because of the type of glue I used, but um, yeah, it just it doesn't glue the fabric down. Um, and get a, a nice transition at all so I'll, I'll use Millie Putt later. So now we'll wrap the last bit of fabric around and pin it with some fabric pins and trim off the excess. And onto the fins. I tried to do this um, based on Maria Lazar's video for her uh, translucent mermaid which was gorgeous but um, I encountered problems early on. Um, 
I bought what I thought was the fairy film or the Angelina film, but all this turns out to be thick um, vinyl that already has adhesive to the back of it. So when I did a test fin, it just wasn't the look I was going for at all. It's not translucent, it's quite thick, the edges don't burn very nicely for a neat and finish. So I did a test fin first, this one here. Um, made out of cellophane so we'll move on to that next and see how to make some fins out of cellophane if you don't have fairy film so I use cellophane uh, so some thin wire wire cutters you'll need a candle and some matches don't use matches on their own that was disastrous um, we'll be using that to, to neaten the edges of the cellophane so that they are nice and neat. You'll also need some sprayable adhesive and your choice of nail foil to get the pattern on the cellophane. This worked really well, I was so impressed. So first we'll cut the wire to match our fin shape that we sketched out earlier. I'll skip through this because this was actually took a long time to get it posed in the right way and it was a lot of floundering on my part and then we'll spray the first you'll need two sheets of cellophane for the sandwiching between the wires so we'll spray that with the adhesive don't forget to wear rubber gloves and that's still sticky so we'll put our wire over top and get the nice fin shape Put a little bit of glue where all the, the wires meet just to give it that wee bit of extra strength. It just didn't look very sturdy. And we'll spray the second layer, sandwich in between. I also went over that with my hair straightener. Um, I think that helped bind them a wee bit better. And we'll cut that to size and onto the nail foil. So I learnt the hard way that you use the silver side down. I tried for ages and wondered why the colour wasn't transferring and it was because I was putting the colour side down. Um, so yeah, that, that, that doesn't work. <laughs> so we'll spray the fin with some um, more of the glue adhesive so that we can start transferring some of that colour. Visual K is all about bright colours and bold patterns, so I thought this would suit our Visual K mermaid perfectly. So let's stick that down really nice and hard, make sure that it transfers properly, and tear that away. It gets nice bright colours. I wanted to make the transitions not quite so square or linear, so I just keep going over areas to try and get that not quite so crisp. You can get a lot of colour off just the one sheet of nail foil, so it's really good as far as waste. Just keep doing that until you're happy with it and um, or until it stops transferring because all the glue's been used up. And now for the other side, once both sides are all coloured, cut it out to the shape that you're wanting. I wanted some quite jagged fins to give her that edgy rock look. And once both fins are done, I lit up the candle and to burn the edges so that they're nice and neat. Uh, fair warning, this cellophane burns really easily. It doesn't, you don't have to get it that close for it to start burning. I had mine almost an inch away and it was already burning the cellophane. So if you get too close, it will just catch fire. <laughs> so um, just be very careful with that. And back to the base of the mermaid. Now that we've got our fins ready, we can 
start looking at stitching that together just pushing that down so I can get the fabric as low as possible so that the millie part won't have to go quite so high and just neatening those edges a bit and then to mix the millie part this is pretty similar to epoxy sculpt in that you have to just mix equal amounts uh, because this is the white type of millie part I recommend setting a timer for seven minutes because it's impossible to tell when it's been fully mixed because the hardener is a kind of yellow so the, there's no color change to go by so that's probably the trickiest part of Millie Putt and the part I hate the most um, I did have some issues at one point with a different doll where it didn't cure properly because I hadn't mixed it for long enough so then I wet it with water keep it nice and moist so that it doesn't dry and just wrap a little band around the top where I want the tail to meet the torso. Just squish that down. Combination of using water, fingers and silicone tools to get that nice and flush. Um, it didn't matter too much if it wasn't going to be too too neat. Most of it's going to get covered by the scales but some of it will look like her skin so uh, closer to the top where her belly button is I wanted to keep it quite neat almost forgot to stitch her tail that's definitely easier done by hand <laughs> I thought the strongest way to attach the fins to her tail would also be with Millie Putt and um, also get the smoothest transition so I'm just using some pieces of Millie Putt um, and smoothing them out to the tail and the fins because we'll cover this with some more glue and nail foil later The stage of the millie part is still really wet so I started doubting whether this would work because the fins kept threatening to completely just fall off until I did the other side and it started hardening but once it was hard it, it was perfectly fine there's no way those are falling off. So I originally was going to cut out some turquoise scales but I found this sequined ribbon and it was just gorgeous it was edgier and I knew my arthritis would thank me for it later so I ended up going with that I tried to make a smoother transition with the Millie Putt and Tail using pastels um, this did not work very well at all uh, so I end up changing to acrylic paint later so fair warning Millie Putt doesn't take pastels very well um, unless you've got the Mr. Super Clear sprayed on it but I didn't want to risk dulling down the fins so I went to body blushing instead, get that um, some nice turquoise and pinky purple shades in there. I wanted her skin to match her fins with those sorts of nice oceany colours but with that nice purple pink to just make it a wee bit edgier and make her skin look almost translucent. actually had less than a quarter of a can of Mr. Super Clear while doing this project so I didn't use as many layers of MSC for the blushing as I usually would because I was just praying that it would hold out for the end of this doll so I could finish her especially her face so I was trying to be very sparing with the blushing at this stage Mm. 
know about other doll customizers but I love body blushing um, I just think it looks gorgeous especially around the joints of the doll so I then painted the fins on Laguna's arms and fingers originally I went with pink but then I thought the dark purple would actually suit her tail more so I did the same on the Millie pup before changing to black realizing that I need to match it with the sequins and that black would suit this much better than the purple but that's okay live and learn each project you learn new, many new things I did a little bit of dry brushing on the fins just to get that black transition looking very nice and smooth and then I just masked off her body so I could spray some of that adhesive and use some nail foil on her body for the transition to her from her fin to her torso. I had no idea if this was going to work so I'm glad it came out well. Um, I was terrified the whole time. It did take a few layers to build up the colour uh, so I did end up having to spray her about two times with the spray adhesive and used two sheets of the nail foil but it ended up um, covering all of that black and making a really nice looking transition. So finally to cover her tails with her sequins at the last minute I thought it would look quite cool with some feathers on her fins. Um, first rule of visual K fashion was often more is more. So first I used some fabric glue to glue the ribbon in strips which was actually much harder than I thought it was going to be. In hindsight I should have bought the sequins as fabric rather than ribbon because then I could have wrapped it around it and I wouldn't have those wee peekaboo areas where you could see the yellow fabric. I also should have used black fabric but I just tried to get in there with some black paint and cover that up. At least I know that for next time. So then I added on the feathers. Just a beautiful colour and I loved how they were spotty at the end. Uh, they just looked great with the turquoise in the nail foil. Um, word of warning when you're using glitter put the cap on properly every time. I didn't and I ended up knocking it over and covered the carpet with glitter. Um, so don't be like me. Put the lids back on even in between when you're going to be using it again because um, I lost half a bottle of glitter. <laughs> I then went in and put sequins on individually to cover where the ribbon and the, t the fins meet. I then used some Elmer's glue and just lightly put some glue over the fins for using the glitter and I stuck diamantes all over them as well. Um, I decided not to show that on camera because it took a long time and they just kept jumping out of my tweezers. So, um, it wasn't pretty and <laughs> it took a long time even just to pick up one sequin so I thought I'd spare you that. So I did the same up by her tail is just add the sequins on one by one um, to get that transition looking nice and I also added some wee diamantes and rhinestones. Uh, I thought they might look like droplets of water so I thought that fit her mermaid theme. Finally onto the head. So her plan here was to have a split colour hair dye. So I, and with pigtails, so first I'll need to paint her head to suit. I plan, yeah, I usually make wigs, but this time I was going, decided to reroute um, with acrylic yarn, 
which this is actually my first time rooting with acrylic yarn so I was quite nervous about how it was going to go because yarn is a lot thicker than the synthetic hair I just used watered down acrylic for painting her scalp and then I remembered that she is having a few black pieces in her uh, in her fringe on the turquoise side so I just added those in waiting and waited for it to dry before rerouting which I did off camera and the yarn was actually so thick that I ended up only having to do the hairline especially because she's having pigtails um, you're not going to notice and it would have just been so insanely thick if I'd put yarn in the main part of her head as well so once that's all rerouted I filled it up with some fabric glue and unmasked go back to the body and do some body blushing after carefully masking off the body and the tail with rags so that I didn't get any MSC on her tail or her fins. I'm just making those colours a wee bit bolder. onto the face up which I admit was really nerve-wracking for me um, eyes and eyebrows are the bane of my existence I spend a lot of time going back and redrawing them to get them even I wanted to use some really really bold colors for her eyeshadow this time which is also a first for me so that was a wee bit nerve-wracking but also really fun so I just went in there with some red to do some blushing with some I use Mungyo chalk pastels to get the base of her eyes and just the base blushing on her face and lips so I use the same purple that I used for her body I love bold looking eyeshadow um, I do it a lot for my own makeup so I really wanted to try it on this doll and going in there with not only some red purples but also the turquoise that's in her fin so I spend a lot of time just trying to build that up which was really difficult trying to be frugal with the MSC because I was terrified it was going to run out first coat of M a second coat of MSC and I've brought unmasked her body so I can have it there as a reference um, to make sure that her makeup's going to match her tail I wanted her, li her lip makeup to be quite edgy so I go in there with a lot of red and black I like the softer look on lips so I tend to really only use pastels on her lips compared to the pencils. And just putting out the base shape for the eyebrows. seems to be that for most doll artists eyebrows are the worst part um, mention in the comments if you're a doll artist who hates uh, who hates doing the eyebrows keep going in and changing their shape because I just couldn't get them even and I, I know people say that they should should not be matching they should just be sisters not twins um, but half the time I get one eyebrow looking the way I want and the other one looks like an adopted child. <laughs> now I'm darkening her eye shape with purple watercolour pencil. I, pref I use Faber-Castell. I've also tried 
using some Derwent pencils on this face up but I actually found the Faber-Castell better. I'll give them another go in my next doll. Um, maybe I just didn't have enough layers of MSC to build up the colour. But um, the Faber-Castell definitely worked for me better. I found Laguna's face mould to be quite tricky because her eyes kind of bulge out from her head so it made drawing her eyes really difficult for me and getting them even uh, so I just I, I keep going back and trying to correct these off and on I'm just darkening up her uh, eye shape with that purple pencil I got a lot of inspiration for her look from my favorite Japanese visual K band called Kodomo Dragon the lead singer Hayato has amazing fashion sense and his costumes are just stunning so I I used them as a reference for her makeup and her general style because uh, I just worship them they're an amazing band I was originally going to give her green eyes so I put some green in her eyeshadow as well which I do actually end up changing later because there wasn't any green really in her tail so I thought she might look better with the blue eyes. building up the eye colour there even though I end up changing it later it looks like I've missed a few spots in her eyebrows even at this stage but um, in her original design she has piercings along her eyebrow so I wanted to have that edgy shaved eyebrow look so she does have a few spots where they are supposed to be shaved where her piercings are going to go later so that was interesting it um, definitely played at my perfectionism I kept trying to resist going back and filling them in so now I'm changing her eye color to blue I originally wanted a heterochromia look with the one eye being a dark blue and the other one being an ice blue with mostly black and this doesn't end up quite as prominent in the final look as I had hoped so um, I'll try that again next time and hopefully I can get that looking more pronounced I'm just going back in again and again making her eyeshadow brighter and bolder I think by this stage I've used about three coats of Mr. Super Clear.
admit doing the eyeshadow on this particular doll was really fun. I, I've not used really bold colours before and I can't wait to do it again. Going in with a little bit of black just to darken up the sides there give a sort of cat eye look. And then going in on the inner eye with some white, which I do with my own makeup as well. It makes the eyes look bigger and brighter, I find, um, and a lot less tired. So now I'm going in with a dark blue watercolour pencil to darken up her eye shape. Even though I'll be giving her false gluing on false eyelashes later, I still tend to draw in the top lashes, just in case I change my mind at the last minute. I ended up taking Jackie O's advice and using just a plain metal pencil sharpener. I had bought a kind of expensive Faber Castell one and it just never got them sharp. Um, even after using the first few times it almost felt like the blade was blunt. Um, and these metal sharpeners are only about $3 and they get them amazingly sharp. It was brilliant. I usually have a hard time getting crisp lines but it was much easier this time. I'll link her video down below. She has a really good video on the tools that you need for customizing and that was I think where that pencil sharpener came up um, so definitely watch it if you can because it was very helpful for me. A lot of people at this stage like to go in with acrylics. I can't seem to get them thin enough, so I quite like just wetting a tiny paintbrush and then going in with the watercolour pencil. It picks up colour really well and it gets it darker than it would if you were just using the pencil, but it keeps it thin compared to the acrylic paint. So I'm doing that to whiten up the main part of her eye and also try and correct her eye shape. Um, I'll be doing this a lot that you'll probably see during the sped up footage because at the moment she's looking a little bit cross-eyed. I think I got this particular tiny paintbrush from AliExpress and it's I think this is the tiniest one that I own and I absolutely this is the first time I used it and I absolutely loved it. So I'm just making the white of her eye whiter and correcting her eye because this this eye is the problem child I think <laughs> it's the the main iris is not as close to the inner portion of the eye as the other one so I'm going to try and see if I can move it over while whitening these whites
so this is as close as I could get it. I'm, this was originally what I was going for with the heterochromia, which sadly I don't think I get quite as prominent as that picture. Um, but maybe for next time, they both ended up looking quite blue. Just building up the white on the inner portion of the eye. Um, I'll use Perlex on that later, um, but I try and get it as white as I can before that because the MSC really dulls down Perlex powders. After sharpening the colour pencil as sharp as I possibly can, I go in and give her some eyelashes. I lost a bit of detail on her eyelids, so I'm just going back in with some white and giving her some basic highlights. I tend to just use little strokes of white rather than going over the top of the lip because I think it looks a wee bit too milk moustachey for me, so I try to avoid that. Um, I don't know if I'm just too heavy handed on it, but it always just looks too prominent when I try and use it on my dolls. I realised that I didn't really use any of the turquoise blue on her blushing compared to what I did on her body, so I'm just going back in there with some turquoise blue and some of the purple so that it matches the body a little bit better. And time for some Perlex powder because she's a mermaid and mermaids have to have some shine to them in my opinion. I wanted her skin to glow. So I do a few layers of that throughout her face up because with each spray of MSC it loses a lot of that shine. So I, off camera I actually went in and did some more details on her eyes because they were really really wonky and um, it took a lot of time to change them and I thought the video would probably get a week a little bit long if I included all of that I think it took about two hours to change them and get them at this stage but I'm much happier with them so I predominantly did that with watercolor pencils wet with a paintbrush so that it kind of worked like acrylic paint and it made the color thicker without being too thick and painty looking. Now I'm just going in with some a wet paintbrush and black watercolour pencil to make some darker eyebrow hairs. Now going in with a wet paintbrush and white watercolour pencil to do her eye shines and eye highlights, which I also correct quite a bit. Um, I always manage to get them being uneven shapes. So another a bonus to using watercolour is that it's much easier to correct than acrylic. You can just use a wet paintbrush or a Q-tip to just wipe off what you don't like. Unfortunately, I couldn't do that with this particular doll because I couldn't use as many layers of MSC as I usually do. At this point, I'm trying to do the nice eye shines that Jackie O uses on her channel because they look fabulous on her dolls. Um, and then going in with some highlights on her eyelashes which 
I end up doing a wee bit too strong for my liking so I go over them with some black to make them not quite so hardcore. Just measuring her eyelashes for later. Yeah, so those eye whites are really hardcore so <laughs> I'll go over them with black later. I can never seem to get the eye shines. When I try to do them like Jackie O, I always get them crooked. I, they just don't look quite as nice as when she does them. So, um, yeah, I might wipe those off and try again. I'm just going in the inner eye with some white Pearlex powder. I really like having that shimmer in the inner eye and then going again over her skin to get that shiny mermaid look. And just blackening up her lips a little bit more. having another go at those eye shines and I just couldn't get them to look right so I end up painting over them with the watercolor pencil and some pastels and I think I tried about four times and I just couldn't get them looking right so I went with some more subtle lines and went back in to do those highlights because they, they weren't even close to being the same shape before Just going in with some black pastel to make those pupils not quite so bold before going over those highlights again. And one last coat of Mr. Super Clear and she's done. I glued her piercings on off camera because they wanted to jump everywhere. So now for the styling of her hair, I combed her hair out with a toothbrush so I could part her, and tie her pigtails so that I could cut her fringe and just using water and a toothbrush to try and tame this a little bit so she's got longer side parts to her fringe which are going to be braided and then her main fringe is going to be cut really short and asymmetrical so we're going to lose a lot of length here I love how much easier acrylic yarn is to cut than synthetic hair. Synthetic hair always manage to cut wonky. So layer by layer, um, I split it, the fringe into two or three layers and just thin it with an eyebrow razor or it would end up looking really thick and probably a wee bit less natural. Do the bottom layer first and try and get that as thin as possible so that it just gives a little bit of coverage but with the top layer being the main part of the fringe while also trying not to cut too short because with dull hair if you cut it too short it won't grow back sadly and now just going at the top layer with the eyebrow razor now her wee side braids. So they are going to be longer than her fringe but much shorter than the rest of her hair so we'll just cut those straight. And part them for their braids. I wanted a little bit of pop of colour on each other <laughs> and my little dog decided to come and say hi, she wanted cuddles. Um, so I wanted little pops of colour on each side so on the turquoise side I wanted the pop of black and on this black side I wanted a little pop of the turquoise so there is a little bit hidden under there 
which you can see mostly at the bottom of her braid. So I brushed out some yarn and had it as a separate ponytail so that I could add it in and bulk it up her because I'm not braiding these I'm just twisting them so I wanted them to be really puffy so I, I just used a pin to pin it into the head and wrap around the wee extra yarn inside the ponytail so that it would be nice and thick and puffy and I did the same on the turquoise side And it came out really cute. I was so happy because it took me about three weeks to comb out all of the yarn for her hair and then another two weeks rerouting it. Just use a eyebrow razor to taper the ends of her pigtails. There we go, it looks almost, almost Lolita-ish. Little pigtails, little pigtails and braids. So cute. Very pleased. Um, I'll definitely be doing an acrylic yarn reroute again sometime because it came out a lot better than I thought it would. But now she needs some hair accessories. So on her original design, she has some wee butterfly and feather accessories in purple in her hair and along her face. So um, we'll start off with her butterfly ears. I recolored them with metallic watercolor pencil um, sorry the metallic watercolor paint in hindsight acrylic would have been much better when i went to go over these with varnish it did kind of mud muddle up the colors a wee bit um, but not too badly so um, i'm glad that it didn't completely ruin the color I ended I painted a big rose and some little roses but I actually end up only using the little roses because the big rose was way too big but I used the same purple metallic watercolor paint and highlighted the green watercolor paint and a little bit of pearlex powder about three or four coats of the purple watercolor paint to build up the opacity otherwise the first coat they just look really washed out so this is a close-up of the varnished ears and I decided to add on some little feathers before gluing on some pins because I wanted them to be removable they kind of look like ears but then she also already has ears so I thought making them removable would make sense so I just ended up using super glue used fabric glue for the feathers and super glue for and I just used regular um, regular sewing pins I originally tried to use liquid nails because um, that was supposed to be really good for holding the pins in. It really isn't. Just use super glue. Super glue worked perfectly. And this is the finished doll with all of her accessories in. I ended up gluing sequins to her chest. Um, I think there's a universal debate of Mermaid having a top or no top. Thank you so much for watching. Um, I hope you liked the video. Um, like, if you liked the video, please like, and if you want to see more, please subscribe. And any comments, welcome below. Um, thank you so much for watching.